Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Las Vegas for HPE Discover 2016, Hewlett Packard Enterprise. This is SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Our next guest is Alistair Winner, who's the VP of Technology Services of the Compute Group within HP Enterprise. Alistair, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, great to be here. So I just want to start the segment off here just quickly to define and clarify the HP spin out of the other services group Technical service. We have Scott Weller on, yes. uh, the chief of the group, um, and just and just draw the decision. Just take a quick second to to explain the difference between kind of what's happened because the announcement of spinning out the, the outsourcing services group with CSC. Explain and what's left over, why it's relevant, so on and so forth. Sure. No, great question. I was expecting you to to ask me that one. Uh, so enterprise services is really where customers choose uh, us to operate and run their environments for themselves. So it's really where they abdicating responsibility for IT. Um, and that's been a very successful business, clearly, for, uh, for us over a number of, of years. And technology services, uh, we've really acted as a supplier to them, quite frankly. We, we actually we view them as a very important customer, even though they're an internal entity currently. Um, so really, uh, from, a, from a technology services perspective, we're very much focused on the infrastructure itself, providing support, providing advice and guidance and technical consulting around the, the, the physical products themselves. And clearly, enterprise services then take those and they add layers of value on top, which they then present back to. ES, enterprise services, what's being spun out. Correct. That's more on the delivery end-to-end, -end, traditional kind of SI kind of function. Correct, SI, sort of thing, managed, yeah, managed uh, services. You guys are doing technical services, which is really the, the meat and potatoes of helping customers get to their destination of whatever outcome they're looking for. That's yes. a solution around hybrid cloud, obviously you're on the compute side. Um, what's the most important thing going on there and why is that staying within HP Enterprise? So, I mean what we do exactly as you described is, um, I, I, I'd, I'd say it's more than meat and potatoes, quite frankly. <laughs> it's very, very <laughs> the steak strategically on, important. Meat on the bone, or, no, yeah. but important. It very, it's, it's, it's extremely, extremely important. And you're right, from a, from a technology services support perspective, historically, We've had uh, a reputation and we've added value in the data center um, specifically to help customers with availability and security of their, of their environments. And I think um, what we're doing now with the emergence of hybrid is really helping customers um, move on that journey and to ensure that they have very consistent experience uh, throughout, that, uh, throughout that process. So we're uh, really looking to empower them and, and especially around the, the placement of workloads and, and apps. We want to ensure that regardless of the uh, the environment or the platform that that app lands on, it's very clear that they have a support partner and a services partner to, to, to call on, and that's, uh, that's our role. I mean, I've always looked at the technology services component as the, the, the accelerant to achieve value as fast as possible, and it's sort of, okay, we're going to do this. How do we do it? Yes. You guys are who we call to get that done. Is that a fair assessment? It's, it's, it's absolutely, absolutely fair. So uh, you know, our, our role is absolutely to look at the, you know, the business outcome that the customer is attempting to achieve, try and translate that back into um, you know, the technology aspects that they, may, uh, that they may own or they need to, to buy or consume. And, and, and yeah, we're, we're there to really partner with them to extract that value. What's the biggest challenge that you see with customers right now? Because as they look at app development, workloads are a big focus yet the data center investments are there and the hybrid cloud is that integration point. Can you share some things that you guys are doing right now? I know the data center care and some other things you guys have done in the past have been pretty successful. What's the new thing? What's the new insight that you could share with the audience? Sure, absolutely. So um, I think yeah, we, we really regard IT operations as our principal customer. And uh, I would say in the discussions I have with, uh, with IT operations, really there, their principal challenge is meeting the needs of their developers. So um, you know, creating an agile environment which meets their needs and meets the needs of the, of the business. So it's all around the shift to, to hybrid, shift to, uh, to DevOps. And actually what we've been doing is we've been spending a lot of time looking at the, um, the unique characteristics of the public cloud and looking at how can we apply some of those uh, characteristics actually on-premise to, to aid and help our IT operations uh, colleagues and customers. 
So things like um, um, you know, changing the consumption model from just being a capex straight purchase to uh, a variable consumption model, looking at how can we help customers avoid the complexities of capacity planning. So how can we you know, take that away? And also, how can we give them uh, customers and IT operations in particular advice and guidance and help to really enable them to, to, to pull together you know, the, um, the DevOps supply chain with all these tools and technologies that, uh, that exist in order to, to really meet the, you know, the needs of uh, their customers. John and I talk all the time about you know, cloud, and, and everybody sort of thinks about cloud as a destination. It's where you put your data, it's where you put your apps, but we talk about cloud as an operating model. Yes. Independent of, of where it is, and I, I'm sure you guys are sort of agree with that, but I wonder if we could unpack that a little bit. So what does that mean to change the operating model from you know, where we have been historically to where they want to go? What are customers telling you that? So, 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 yeah, so I, I completely agree. And in fact, you know, in much of the data we look at, actually the principal destination for customers or consumption model is private cloud or, or a virtual private cloud. So um, yeah, clearly the, you know, the, the, the principles of self-service and simplicity uh, are really resonating with, uh, with, with customers. Um, Really, the, you know, the, the, where our customers are looking for help is, is, is around automation and, and, and really trying to remove the human middleware that, I mean, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of heavy lifting that has to happen in IT if you, uh, if you own and operate your own, your own environment. And uh, historically, a lot of that's really not added true value to the, to the business. So it's about how do we, how do we automate that and, and ensure that um, uh, you know, customers can go from, you know, the business can go from an idea to, to implementation as, as quickly as so possible. So when customers go through a business case, Alistair, for automation, uh, do they try to target, okay, look, we're spending X amount on IT labor that's not differentiating us from our competition. We want to cut that out through automation and we want to redeploy that to Y. Is that a part of the business case? Is it, ex is it, is it that explicit or is it more, there's just a better way, we can sort of go to school on what the public cloud people are doing and apply that and see what the outcome is. Talk about that a little bit. So, um, no, it's a great, uh, it's a great question. I, I would say that uh, actually every customer that I've come in contact with is, is approaching it in a slightly, um, in a slightly different way. Um, actually, it, it, what you tend to see is the impetus for this happen because of a particular project or, or, uh, or workload requirement. So rather than trying to transform everything at once, uh, customers are sort of looking at a particular use case, and yes, they'll, they'll absolutely do as you describe. I mean, we'll we'll sort of help to understand well what's it going to take to to run it in a traditional way. And many customers will actually explore you know private cloud and public cloud as potential as potential sourcing options. And then based on I guess the unique business and IT context in which they're they're, they're operating in, because some some are ready for for cloud, some really aren't. Some are much more advanced in their automation than others, uh, you know, they'll choose the, you know, the optimal location to, to operate their, uh, their workload. I think the other thing that their look, you know, customers are looking at is, is trying to make the workload portable. So it's not just about making a choice and then that's where, that's where it's going to reside forever. That's sort of the traditional way that we've operated. You, know, you buy a server and some storage, you run your app and that's where it sits forever. Now we want to be able to actually move the, you know, the, the, the workload. We want to be able to optimally place it. And that may well reside in the public cloud for test and dev. You want to move it back um, uh, on-premise for, uh, you know, for much of its life. And you might want to end up moving it back again uh, as the app um, you know, comes end of life. When I first heard the term DevOps about five years ago, I was, uh, you know, John and I were talking about, explain that to me. And then you said something, John, at the time. It's, you know, Dave, it's really ops dev you know, there's a way, so many ops people out there that need to transform. H are you seeing that transformation? How is that taking place from a, from a skills perspective? And how do, does HP Enterprises technology services evolve its skill sets to accommodate that? So I, I would completely agree. I think it, it certainly is ops dev. And, and I think the uh, you know, IT operations feel a sense of threat even from the, from the public cloud. Uh, right. So it's about them really stepping up and, and be able to provide a service Protecting which, turf. <laughs> well, protecting turf, but you know, yeah. what we see is, um, you know, developers, will, they'll, they'll, they'll just bypass, I mean, yeah, you know, of course. You know, you'll right. see a lot of shadow IT, and that's not, that's not optimal workload placement, you know, that's, uh, that's just people being, uh, being creative. So they're absolutely looking for our, for our help and, and our guidance, and um, you know, we have a service that we call infrastructure automation. I think we've talked to you previously about sure. it, where 
where we, uh, where we um, provide advice, best practice and, and, and guidance. We have, a, we have a large team of, of people who are themselves um, developers, uh, which is interesting. And we, uh, and we make those available as a service to, um, uh, to our customers, principally uh, operations teams that are looking, you know, they're really pulling together the, uh, the supply chain of, um, of DevOps tools. Are to they historically developer software engineers yes. or are they more? Yes, they're absolutely software yeah. engineers. I mean, we, within our group, um, as an example, we develop the software that connects our products back to HP for, for like I, I, data center IoT is what I'll, I'll call it. Yeah. Um, so yes, they're, they're, they're absolutely using these tools and products every day and, uh, and we give our customers access to them as part of this uh, service. Alistair, talk about the uh, change that cloud has um, impacted the enterprise, uh, specifically around application development workloads. That's always been the conversation, oh, the workloads run on this, and that's in the compute side, you're close to that kind of conversation because you want to compute close to the data, you want to move compute around, all that conversation around data and the app. So DevOps implies, I'll see, infrastructure as code, so the app developers don't have to do all that heavy lifting on the infrastructure side, which is you're involved in. How has that changed the solution architect out there? Because at the end of the day, the guy in the customer environment, that your customer, is sitting there saying, I have an app I'm working on, but yet it's also a DevOps challenge because it's a horizontally integrated approach. What are some of the things you're seeing that's impacted that conversation? Is it the cloud, is it DevOps? Because the app developers ultimately are going to drive the workload into the infrastructure yes. where you're going to be adaptive yes. and agile on the same side. So talk about that dynamic and what's the, what's the real impact there? So, um, yeah, that's an that interesting question. I, I, I would say that yeah, from a developer uh, perspective, what we're, what we're clearly seeing is the switch to, towards containers and, and microservices development. So the way that apps are being built is very different, and the fact that they're continuously changing and evolving uh, is, uh, is sort of new to the environment, uh, or, or, or to many IT operations teams, uh, for sure. And um, so, yeah, the, 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 uh, the developer is really not um, not particularly focused, I think, on the on the infrastructure destinations so much, rather than the the features and functions that the application or workload requires for it to uh, to be uh, to be successful. Uh, we're certainly seeing a uh, sort of a resurgence of um, uh, bare metal deployments. So yeah, we went through this huge VMware uh, virtualization wave, and uh, you know we're now starting to see. Um, you know, containers really uh, emerge and, and, and customers starting to deploy those uh, onto, onto bare metal. Um, and of course, you know, what we announced last time in London with composable infrastructure, you know, we, we, yeah, we have technology there that actually enables uh, an IT team to invest in one platform and actually be able to service all the requirements. Is there a theme that you're seeing out there that, that rises up to the top in your conversations? What are, what's that theme that keeps on bubbling up with your customers in terms of you know, really kind of moving to this agile environment. So I think I, I think the yeah the the, the, ret the recurring theme is the need for the yeah, the need for speed. They still want all of the attributes that <laughs> we've we've traditionally associated with uh, mission critical IT. You know, they want the availability and security and and uptime, but they just want they just want to move fast. And and in the digital economy, you know, speed is speed is everything. The need for speed, move fast or die, as we heard earlier. Um, I guess my final question would be, take a minute, if you can, to talk to the folks out there watching, or watch the video, or watch the Cube Gem highlight, about what's the most notable thing going on around technical service within HP right now, at this HP Discover, and how does that change or enhance or augment the pre-existing announcements that you guys have done in helping customers cross the bridge to the future? Sure, absolutely. So the one thing that we're, that we're introducing here at Discover is the, um, is a service that we call Campus Care. So what I've talked to you about principally is, is, is activity residing in the data center. And uh, what we're doing is we're taking the principles of data center care and we're applying them to customers who are embracing a mobile first uh, approach. So where, they, where they're actually um, uh, gearing out their uh, campuses with, uh, with, uh, with wireless technology. And um, you know, again, they want one number to call, they want um, uh, an assigned account team that understands their business requirements, and they want to do um, uh, activities that uh, you know it, it continuously make the, uh, the the experience of their customers a better one. So uh, that's a really exciting opportunity for us to actually move outside or beyond the data center uh, into uh, into some other areas. And exciting things you guys have shown on the show floor. Anything notable, um, specific solutions you'd like to highlight? 
I think um, I would certainly recommend people go and check out the uh, HC380, our new hyper-converged solution. So uh, although it's a physical product, uh, actually that's all about the experience. And, and for me, this is one of the first products that we've announced where we've not really talked about the speeds and feeds, it's all about the experience it creates. So it's a very simple, intuitive device to use, a bit like your iPhone. Yes, um, and uh, and uh, it, um, it has, it has a, a very high level of service content. So, um, you know, we're really trying to abstract the complexity away from our customers there. Give you the last word. What's the vibe of the show this year? You can encapsulate it down uh, for the folks who couldn't make it. What's the vibe this year? So I think there's a huge level of excitement. I mean, this is, uh, you know, we, uh, we, we, we brought HPE to the world in, in London six months ago. We've had two quarters now of, of uh, very strong performance as a, you know, as a business. Uh, you know, we're, we're still very much focused around our transformation areas, and I think uh, you know they're really, really coming to life here. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's uh, it's excitement, and I think people can really get a sense now of what this uh, new company is about. Alistair, thanks for sharing your uh, insights here on the Cube. We're live here at HP Discover in Las Vegas. This is the Cube. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, my co-host. We'll be right back with more after this short break. You're watching the Cube. <laughs>